Assalamualaikum my good day to everyone. Now we continue our lecture on topic fourth vectors. The objectives of the lecture now is uh, number one, you should be able to explain what is the force vectors, uh, to explain the vector separation and to express force and position in Cartesian vector. So overall, the expected outcome, uh, students should be able to solve the problem of force vector in the mechanical application by using the parallelogram law and trigonometry because we already have the uh, review on the parallel and trigonometry. So this is the outline of the topic chapter 2. So number 1, um, we have divided uh, this topic into three parts. So part 1, uh, scalar vectors. Uh, another uh, 2.2 is vector operations and 2.3 is additions of forces. So this is uh, part 1. Okay, and then part 2, we cover about the Cartesian vectors in 2D and 3D. And the last topic is 2.5, force and position vector we cover in part 3. So next is 2.1, scalar and vector. So let's start. What is scalar? So scalar can be defined as a, a quantity that has only a magnitude. So, scalar is a quantity that has magnitude. So, for this example, this figure shows that length of a mini car, length of mini car is 3.821 millimeter. So, length is a quantity and 3.821 millimeter is magnitude. Okay. So, next, what is vector? So, vector is defined a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. So, for this figure, it shows that position on the plane is 25 miles from west southwest. So, positions become quantity. 25 miles is magnitude. West southwest is direction. So, this is the definition of scalar and vector. Next, let's identify scalar and vector. So, what is the characteristic of scalar? Scalar is a quantity and magnitude. Vectors, quantity, magnitude and direction. So, is uh, this chocolate bar is scalar or vector? It is scalar. This one, forces, scalar or vectors. So, it is a Vector. This one. The mass. Mass is what? Mass is a quantity and a magnitude. So it is a scalar. This one. The shear bending and torsion. So shear bending and torsion has a quantity, magnitude and also direction. So it is vector. This one. Time. Time is a quantity and magnitude. So, time is scalar. This one, velocity. Velocity has a quantity, magnitude. It has direction or not? Yes. Yeah. So, it is a vector. And the last one, golden bar. This golden bar is, it has a quantity, magnitude. So, it is a scalar. Next, you can compare uh, what is the scalar and what is the vector. So, much remember that the a quantity that has a magnitude, uh, so it is a scalar. For example, mass, length, time, temperature, volume and density. And then, um, when the quantity that has both magnitude and direction, for example, position, displacement, velocity, acceleration, momentum and force are categorized as a vector. So next is the vector characteristic. So number one, vector represent by, an, uh, represent by a letter with an arrow over it such as like this. Okay, and then uh, this is the, the, the bold, the bold letter, e, let's say E. F V 
uh, whatever letter that bold that you can bold is a, it can be represented as a vector. Okay, and then it has a magnitude. So normally magnitude is designed as a like this. So this we call it as modulus. And commonly vector is represent uh, represented as a bold letter, and it magnitude positive quantity as a uh, later also or you can have like this to represent uh, vectors magnitude so uh, this is the vector so this is we call this arrow can be a vector so we call it as a vector A as a capital letter A so now the length of arrow is the magnitude of vector so this is so like uh, for this scale so this scale is one so now you have uh, this length is one two three four so this we have this arrow okay this arrow here uh, show the directions okay and then uh, angle between the reference axis and arrow line of action we call directions of vector so this is the line of axis and this is the uh, this is a reference axis to the vector so we call it direction for angle so must remember arrow head is sense of vector so uh, positive upward and downward is negative so this is example uh, so uh, this vector a have okay this vector a have a four unit and it has a uh, direction is 20 degree measure counter clockwise from the horizontal so for this case if we measure counter clockwise it's become positive okay so and then the sense okay upward become positive also so the point o here called tail and the head here okay so the point o is called tail of the vector and the point p is called tip or head of the vector okay next 2.2 is vector operation so as usual we have multiplication and divisions of a vector by a scala so number one if we have a product of vector a so if we have scala so scala means number so we can multiply as number and vector so this is the magnitude okay and then if a okay if the number is a positive so the sense of um, a a number multiply the vector is the same as the sense of the vector a and then if a if this number is negative and then sense of the uh, multiply uh, vector is become opposite to the sense of a so for this example this is a positive vector and this is the negative vector okay so now let's say you have a number uh, negative okay negative negative of vector is found by multiplying vector by negative negative one so become negative lah okay so the law of uh, multiplication supplies so if vector divide by a number so it can have like the one divide by a number times a vector as long as uh, the number is not zero so if the number is two so our vector become two a so uh, double of this vector and also if we have a number is negative 1.5 so our vector become negative and then we have a multiply with the 0 0.5 so we have 0 0.5 a this one okay this one this is the examples of the multiplication sign division next vector addition additions of two vectors a and b give a resultant vector r so we can use bar law so this uh, resultant force resultant vector can be found by the triangle construction so remember this triangle construction 
So the communicative here, the resultant is equal to A plus B or B plus A. So this is still remember. So if we have uh, these two vector, vector A, vector B, and then we add vector A plus vector B, then we use the parallel, then we can have the intersection is the resultant force. So this is the step how we can solve the additions of two vector. Okay, so next, so this is just for special case. So if we have the collinear, so we have uh, this uh, vector A and this uh, vector B. So collinear vector both have the same line of action. So the resultant is equal to A plus B. So this is the special case for the collinear vectors. Okay, so now for the vector subtraction. So for subtraction, we can have like this. So this resultant, okay, R prime can be A minus B or A plus uh, in bracket negative B. So the rules can be like this. So if you have, uh, as usual, if we have A and B, the vector A and vector B. So let's say B is a negative, like this. So this is a positive A. So uh, this is the parallel. And this is become the R prime. Okay, R prime, the resultant for the A minus B. Or you can have like this. So this one, uh, this is the top side. This is the bottom side. So you can have, so this is the A and this is the B. As usual like this, this is B. So you can have like this, the R prime. Understand? Right. So this is uh, similar to our review, the resolution for the vector. So how we can resolve because uh, this resultant okay, is contra by this component. Uh, so this is a vector A and this is the vector. Uh, this is vector B and this is the vector A. So resultant is come from vector A plus vector B. By using the parallel. Okay, and then this is the 2.3. is a vector addition of the forces. As what we have already uh, in the review before. If you have three forces here, so we want to get what is the resultant. So first, we need to find resultant for the F1 and F2. So here we have, let's say we have FR prime. And then this FR prime plus with the F3. So this one we can get the FR like this. Still remember or not? So we solve F1, F2, so we can have the FR prime. And then FR prime with the F3, and then we have the construction triangle like this. And then we can cut what is the force resultant. Okay, so this is the applications of the vectors addition. So look at this figure. So this figure, we have force A and force B. Exiting on the hook. So now you have the force A and this is the force B. So now how to get the FC. Okay. So this is FC. So this FC, you can have uh, this uh, parallel and the intersection is the FC. Okay. So you need to sketch uh, the parallel in order to get the FC. Alright. Next is the step to solve the vectors operation. So now this is the method that we want to use the parallelogram or par law. So def uh, definitely number one, okay, we need to sketch the par law. Okay, number two, uh, two component force at uh, to form the resultant forces. So this one we have to vector lah. And then uh, from the two vector, we add, we can get the force resultant. And then number three, uh, resultant force is shown by the diagonal of the parallel. Diagonal means the intersection. And then number four, the component is shown by the sides of the parallel. Okay, next, uh, how to resolve? Okay, so uh, to resolve a force in two components along two axes directed from the tail of the force, so we can start. Uh, at the head there. And then construct lines parallel to the axis. 
and then we need to label all the known and unknown forces magnitude and angle so let's say at the question uh, the question already given what is the magnitude for the vector or the force and then what is the angle uh, of the directions of the vector so you can label if unknown you just write okay and then um, also we need to identify the two unknown components so this one is uh, similar all right so uh, trigonometry so we need to implement the trigonometry so must remember after we sketch the parallel so you need to redraw back the half portion so the half portion means that you want to choose the top triangle or the bottom triangle so you have to choose either one okay and then you can use the law of science or the uh, no, you can choose the law of cosines to determine the magnitude of resultant force. And then you can choose the law of sines to determine the direction. So direction is to get the angle. Okay, so this is the formula. So this is the formula of the uh, sine law. And this is the formula for the cosine law. So if you are using the cosine law to determine the force resultant, this is the important one. The important part is to determine the angle for the resultant. Okay.